Hi, my name is Justin and I'm with Ascent Finance. Today, we're gonna to cover Chapter 13 Bankruptcy in Alaska. Now, one question is, what percentage of Chapter 13 Bankruptcy do you think actually ends successfully, meaning you get out of the debt? Only 38.8%. Why? Because it's often related to the cost and many other variables. So here's what we'll cover in this video. First, a quick Chapter 13 Bankruptcy introduction. Second is going to be your monthly Chapter 13 plan payment. Third, your Chapter 13 Bankruptcy costs in Alaska. Fourth, the Chapter 13 Bankruptcy process in Alaska. Fifth, the Chapter 13 Bankruptcy pros and cons. And finally, the alternatives to Chapter 13 Bankruptcy in Alaska. Before we begin and I go too further, please understand that a Chapter 13 Bankruptcy is quite complex in Alaska. So feel free to ask any questions or comment below and we'll do our best to respond as quickly as possible. Also, please feel free to leave a like if you enjoy the videos as we, those are always encouraging to read. So let's cover a quick introduction. First, what is Chapter 13 Bankruptcy? Chapter 13 Bankruptcy is known as a wage earners plan. So that means it's allowing individuals with a regular income to pay back some or all of their debts. The Chapter 13 Bankruptcy plan is often a monthly plan payment for often three or five years. People like Chapter 13 Bankruptcy because it can stop wage garnishment, foreclosure, and provide protection from creditors often. One of the most important things to understand with a Chapter 13 bankruptcy is the affordability. Basically, how much do you owe each month and how many years are you going to be in a Chapter 13? The reason that your Chapter 13 plan payment is so important is that it actually may be more expensive than your current debt obligations. That said, it could also be less expensive, so it really depends. We got this question so often that we actually built a Chapter 13 calculator based on the actual bankruptcy forms. You can estimate your Chapter 13 plan payment based on your zip code using the Alaska Chapter 13 calculator in the notes below. Now, let's discuss how your Chapter 13 plan payment works in Alaska, the various costs and fees, the, the Chapter 13 bankruptcy process in Alaska, the pros and cons, and the alternatives. So second, your Chapter 13 plan payment in Alaska. Let's talk about your Chapter 13 plan payment in Alaska. There are various factors of what goes into your Chapter 13 plan payment. I'm going to touch on four. The first is disposable income. This is the amount of income you have each month after subtracting all the allowable payroll deductions and allowable living expenses from your gross monthly income. Second, you're going to look at the government's means testing website where you can find the local standards for Alaska's housing, utilities, and transportation. Now, assets. In some cases, the value of your assets could increase the amount of your Chapter 13 plan if your assets have a large amount of non-exempt equity. What I mean is, if you have a home with a great deal of equity above the Alaska bankruptcy exemptions, your Chapter 13 plan payment could be much higher. Debts. Some debts must be paid in full through your Chapter 13 plan. Priority unsecured debts like taxes, alimony, child support, and administration costs are some. Other creditors may receive partial payments, including unsecured debts, medical bills, credit card debt, and personal loans. Chapter 13 plans typically include back mortgage payments and card loan payments. Finally, it's going to look at your recent financial tra transactions. Some recent financial transactions could potentially impact your Chapter 13 plan. Duration is also an important thing to consider in your Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Are you eligible for a three or five year plan? Your average monthly compared to the Alaska median income guideline is used to help determine whether you'd qualify for a three year or a five year chapter 13 bankruptcy. Below in the notes is the median income guidelines for Alaska for cases filed after May 15th. You can also see here or check the government means test website for up to date data as it usually changes every six months. Third, Let's touch on the ch Chapter 13 bankruptcy fees in Alaska. The main fees to consider in Alaska bankruptcy is the Chapter 13 bankruptcy fees, the trustee fees, the filing fees, the bankruptcy courses, miscellaneous fees. The Chapter 13 calculator below also accounts for those fees. So let's cover these fees one by one. First, the attorney fees. The Chapter 13 bankruptcy attorney fee in Alaska is estimated around $3,500. 
The fee may depend on district, so a Chapter 13 attorney fee may be different from Juno to Fairbanks, depending on the district. Chapter 13 trustee fees, on the other hand, is another cost in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. A Chapter 13 bankruptcy, as I stated earlier, is often three or five years, so there are many administration tax tasks for the Chapter 13 bankruptcy trustee to do. So here's a breakdown of Alaska Chapter 13 bankruptcy trustees, which looks to be about 9.9%. Just as a reference, this can result in thousands of dollars in trustee fees. Finally, the filing fee. The bankruptcy filing fee for a Chapter 13 case is around $313. This fee is paid directly to the bankruptcy court. It's a national fee and not specifically um, to Alaska. There are miscellaneous fees such as bankruptcy courses and getting to the court. So please take our calculator below to estimate what your qualification will look like. So let's now cover the Chapter 13 bankruptcy process. The process is important to understanding when filing bankruptcy. So here are some questions to consider in the process to file. First, understand the different types of bankruptcies. So most folks will file a Chapter 7 or a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, but it's important to know the differences. Chapter 7 is often cheaper and provides faster debt relief, but each has its own pros and cons. Second, understand which debts will be eliminated. Many unsecured debts are eliminated in a Chapter 13, but it's, under, it's good to understand which ones are and which are not. Third, estimate your Chapter 13 bankruptcy plan payment. It's good to get an idea of what your 13 could look like for you specifically. Four, understand alternatives to filing Chapter 13 bankruptcy. The main alternatives to Chapter 13 bankruptcy are Chapter 7, debt settlement, debt management, and debt payoff planning. Five, determine whether to hire a Chapter 13 bankruptcy attorney to file bankruptcy. Six, take a credit counseling course. Seven, file bankruptcy petition and other forms. Eight, a Chapter 13 bankruptcy trustee is assigned to your bankruptcy filing. Nine, attend the Chapter 13 bankruptcy court, court meetings. Ten, take a second mandatory debt education course. 11. Continue to make your Chapter 13 monthly plan payments. And 12. You'll receive your bankruptcy discharge. As you can see, there's a whole slew of steps in the process, but some of the processes are just understanding whether you'd like to file bankruptcy or not. The fifth, let's go over the Chapter 13 bankruptcy pros and cons. We'll first cover the pros and cons, or the first cover the pros, excuse me. First pro is it prevents it can prevent foreclosure so that you can keep your home by catching up with the past due mortgage payments over three to five years. Another pro, it can stop wage garnishments, seizures, levies, or any debt collection lawsuits. Pro, it can stop creditor harassment. Another pro, it can stop wage garnishments I was saying before. You may also get a discharge on a second mortgage through a chapter 13. Another pro, you may be able to pay less than what you owe to satisfy the secured lien on your vehicle. Another pro, catch up on past due child support and alimony. Another pro could be getting rid of unsecured debts for pennies on the dollar. You may be able to resolve tax debts and IRS problems. And finally, another pro would be that you can protect property from being sold to pay the debts. Now, let's cover the downsides. One con is the cost of the Chapter 13 bankruptcy can sometimes be expensive. And it's often three or five years. It can have a negative impact on your credit score, and it can reflect negatively on your credit report as well. Two other cons are first, low payment flexibility. It may have a difficulty um, Flex, I mean, you know, variability of what your payment would look like. And finally, your pa monthly plan payment can increase if your income increases. Now we have an idea of the pros and cons. I want to dump, jump into um, Chapter 13 bankruptcy alternatives. So now let's cover the common Chapter 13 bankruptcy alternatives in this video here. So first, let's cover Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So Chapter 7 bankruptcy is often the least expensive option and the fastest form of debt relief. You can get rid of debt relief in as little as 120 days, and there's no Chapter 13 trustee, and the attorney fees are also a lot less expensive because the cases are less complex. Many people file Chapter 7 when they're qualified and are not risk of losing any belongings in the bankruptcy. Second, let's cover debt settlement. So 
Debt settlement is where a company or you negotiate and settle debt with your creditors. The goal is to reduce the payment burden of all your debt by around 50%, which will help lower your monthly payment, thus providing debt relief. There are definitely pros and cons of debt settlement, so definitely do your research. Third, let's cover debt management. Debt management is often where a nonprofit credit counseling agency negotiates the interest rate on your current debt. They may negotiate a high interest card, credit card for on a 25% interest rate down to 9%. The goal is to reduce your monthly payment. You may also be on a three or five year payment plan. I hope this video has been helpful in your understanding of filing a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You can visit the Chapter 13 bankruptcy calculator below to estimate your planned payment. If you learned, did you learn anything, you know, something new from this video, please click um, the subscribe button is we're going to put more and more videos out to hopefully help you make the most informed decision. Now, I'd like to turn it over to you. What are some questions you have about filing Chapter 13 bankruptcy? Please comment below and I'll do my best to respond as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching.